Hi there, I'm Andy Hillier and in this video I'm going to take you through my 10 dream guitars. 10 guitars that I'd love to own. Just before I do, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, which is Andy Hillier, if you could give me a like on the video and leave me some comments in the comment section as well. Okay, so I'm always dreaming about buying more guitars. Uh, I'm always searching guitar sites and manufacturers' websites, looking at every guitar dreaming of when I win the lottery, uh, all the guitars that I'm gonna buy, which is never gonna happen because I don't do the lottery. But anyway, so uh, I've put together a list of 10 guitars. Also, it's come up to my 40th birthday and I might buy myself a guitar, although I probably can't afford half of these guitars on the list. Uh, but so I'm gonna take you through the 10 guitars on my list, although I could have probably done a list of about 100. Okay, let's start, number 10. And it's a James Tyler Studio Elite. Uh, the reason I put this on uh, my list, I've never played one for a start, but they just have the most crazy, amazing finishes. Uh, they just look beautiful, just really original, uh, look very cool. Uh, the headstock, the headstock tends to be a bit of a Marmite type thing, where people like either hate it or love it. Uh, and but I'm kind of in the middle. I don't mind it. It's not the best looking headstock but just really, really cool finishes. So that's number 10 on my list. Number nine on my list is the Paul Reed Smith Santana Retro. Uh, when I first started playing guitar, um, I was really into Santana um, and seeing him play like the, the classic Santana PRS, uh, which wasn't a retro at the time, would have just been the Santana model. Uh, just beautiful tops on them, just look really nice. Uh, so it just kind of takes me back to when I first started playing guitar. And actually quite a few of these um, guitars on my list, I had pictures on my wall. As a kid I used to cut out pictures of guitars from guitar magazines and blue tack them to the wall over. And there was definitely a PRS Santana and a PRS, um, the Ted McCarty as well, which isn't on the list but I'd love one of those as well. So there you go, number nine, a PRS Santana Retro. Number eight. This is a bit of a weird one because it's not an overly expensive guitar and it's quite a, a new guitar that's come out uh, and it's the Ibanez AZ series, um, one of the prestige I would like. Uh, this is on the list because I've actually been looking at possibly buying one of these. Um, they're really cool, they're sort of a retro um, Ibanez guitar. Ibanez are often like, do kind of very metal guitars whereas these are a bit more, more kind of towards a strat type thing. Uh, roasted maple necks, cool pickups. Um, I've played quite a few of them. Some of them are quite heavy. Um, so I'm, I'm a bit reluctant to just go and buy one off the internet. Uh, you have to, for me, I want a quite a nice light guitar. So I'll, I'll have to go and play some to try and find a nice light um, one for me. So there you go, that's the Ibanez AZ. At number seven is a Fender Custom Shop Relic Tele Thin line, it's quite a lot of words. I've always wanted a thin line Telecaster. When I went to the Guitar Institute many, many moons ago, um, a couple of the teachers had, uh, I think it was the Mexican version of, of the thin line Tele with the two humbuckers. Uh, and they always made them sound cool, probably because they were amazing guitarists. Um, but ever since then I wanted a thin line Tele, uh, and this is probably the best version you can get. And I love the relic finish, they just look really, really cool. So number seven, it's Custom Shop Relic Tele Thin Line. At number six is a Tom Anderson Drop Top. Now I remember back probably about 1995, uh, going into a, a shop that used to be in Hitchin in England called Machine Head. And uh, I think this was probably one of the most expensive guitars in the shop. Definitely the most expensive guitar I'd ever played. Uh, it was Tom Anderson, uh, just a strap. Uh, I think it was probably about £1,600 at the time, uh, but back then it seemed like a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, I remember playing this guitar and it was just beautiful, it, it, it played so well, I, I can't remember what guitar I would have had at the time, I probably would have had some Les Paul copy type thing. Um, and playing one of these, it was just a different world, it was absolutely beautiful, beautiful tops on them. I love the quilted maple top that he puts on some of them. Uh, really, really nice guitars, really well built. I've played a few since and they've always been amazing. Uh, so that's number six and Tom Anderson drop top. And at number five is the Sir Modern Plus. Sir guitars, 
a, a really, really well built guitars. Uh, they always sound nice. I think they use their own pickups. Uh, I might be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, but they sound great. They always feel really nice. Um, certain manufacturers, you, you, they just feel right in your hands. Other ones, not so much. Um, but every Sir that I've played has been amazing. And the, the Modern Plus, actually I'd have any Sir guitar, but the Modern Plus would probably be the one that I'd pick out. At number four, the guitar that I should have bought. Um, I love Strats, I'm a massive Fender fanboy. Uh, and if I could only have one guitar, it would be a HSS Strat. And I've got a few, a few that I've changed, um, like modified, put a humbucker in. Um, uh, I just think it's the most versatile guitar. I mean, I love relic guitars. I love just the beaten up look. Uh, so the Fendom Custom Shop, they make the best strats. The relic, HSS, uh, I'm a massive fan of just sunburst ones, but I also love when the paint, um, they put a different color paint over the top of the sunburst. Uh, it just looks really, really cool. And then relic it up. Uh, yeah, awesome guitar. Probably would be, if I had to have one guitar, that would be it. At number three, uh, PRS again. It was the PRS Santana last time. Now this is the PRS Custom 22 or 24. I think if I had the option, uh, probably the 22. Um, but either one would be fine. Just beautifully built guitars, beautiful tops. I love the bird inlays on them. Uh, they always sound great. Yeah, can't go wrong with the PRS guitar and I love the customs. Uh, that and the DGTs, which look very similar. Um, although I haven't played, I think I've only played one of those, uh, but I've played loads and loads of customs. Um, so, number three, a PRS custom. Okay, number two, uh, I think everyone's, or most people's holy grail guitar would be a 1959 Les Paul Burst. But that's not gonna happen, so that's not even going on the list because that's just ridiculous. So, the next best thing is a Gibson Custom Shop 1959 standard reissue. I know they do other like kind of special edition ones of the uh, 1959, but just a standard one, that would do me. Uh, I love Les Pauls, they sound great. Great for rock stuff. Um, and the 59 with a, a flame maple top, it, it's just the guitar, isn't it? It's just amazing. So that's number two. And finally, number one, the Dream Guitar. Uh, which I probably will buy uh, if they ever get many of them into England. Uh, a Gibson ES335. It actually might be a 345 because um, I like the look of the new 345 they're done with the um, different inlays. Uh, but I've always wanted a 335. It kind of goes back to probably Back to the Future and at the end when he's playing. I think it might be a 345 or a 355 or it's a different version but it's basically a 335 when he's playing the Johnny Be Good and then Chuck Berry as well but uh, and then Larry Carson as well just everyone everyone who's got awesome like tone I've never had the money to be able to buy one but I might that might be my 40th birthday present to myself um, but at the moment in the last few years it seems like I don't know why if anyone could let me know why I'd love to know but in England there's hardly any that come into the country. I look around all the different shops uh, and not much comes up. But I'd love a Gibson ES335. Uh, and if Gibson are watching, if they want to send me one, that'd be amazing. Uh, probably in cherry, although I love like the sunbursty uh, type tops or the different bursts. Um, I, I love the 345 as well and the 355 that they used to do. Uh, I'd love a custom shop one, but actually just a, a standard one would be amazing. I think that's what I'll probably buy. And there you have it. That's my 10 dream guitars. Well, let me know what your 10 dream guitars are. S write me a list. Put them in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know what you thought of my list as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you have, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, which is Andy Hillier, I'd really appreciate that. If you could give me a like on the video. Thanks for watching this. I've been Andy Hillier and I'll see you next time.